Hello everybody and welcome to the first of our many virtual events over the next coming weeks. Today we are here to talk about all things nursing and healthcare and I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Des Colley who is the head of department and our student ambassador Amy Martin. Today we are going to talk about all things nursing and healthcare but to just give you an idea of what's coming up over the next coming weeks it's important to highlight that our virtual open day is taking place on April 24th from 11 until 2 p.m. We are also hosting lots of lives like this one over the next coming weeks so make sure to check out our social channels to keep an eye on these events so hello to des and hello to amy how are you both today good morning claire how are you not too bad how are you des well it's an unusual time but and again we're heading into uh i suppose the closure or the uh, end of another academic year and in seeing that we're preparing for the next academic year already so delighted to have the opportunity today to I suppose speak to prospective candidates for our healthcare programs mm -hmm. which are our higher cert in dental nursing our higher cert in pharmacy tech and we're also looking and I think Amy will join us in a little while and talk to us around the BSc Honours in General Nursing mm -hmm. and our BSc Honours in Mental Health Nursing. There yes. are direct entry CAO programmes, yes. which I believe we will probably be focusing most yes. on today. Definitely. And I think it's important as well to remember that over the next coming weeks, we obviously have our Change of Mind campaign. It kicks off in May and we know that it is a very stressful time for six year students, but we want to provide as much information and as much help through a virtual capacity as we can. So we are running lots of live web Q&As as well, which are also taking place this Thursday from 4 until 6 p.m. So Des, I know that you've mentioned the array of courses available. So do you want to maybe spotlight, we'll say, OK, we'll start with general nursing with the fact we have Amy here and we can rope her in first. So we'll start mm -hmm. off with general nursing. Do you want to talk to me a little bit about this four year honours degree programme? Yeah, and I suppose, you know, the honours degree in general nursing is here in AIT since 2002. So we have a proven track record. It's a nursing and midwifery board of Ireland accredited programme. Uh, so in other words, the, uh, as well as completing your honours degree, uh, you also are eligible for registration in general nursing following uh, completion of the program. So that's on successful completion of your four year honours degree, you can then register with the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland, which enables you to work as a registered general nurse. Amy is on that program and, you know, she'll tell you a little bit, but just to give a breakdown, roughly about 50% of the program is based in clinical practice. And that happens across the Leash Offaly, Longford Westmeath, uh, areas with the acute hospitals and the regional hospitals in Mullingar, Tullamore and Port Leash, as well as community, public health and older person sites. So maybe Amy might like to uh, fill us in a little mm -hmm. bit on what life is like as a um, general nurse or a general nursing student here at AIT. Uh, perfect. Well, I suppose that the highlight of my degree has really been placement. Clinical placement gives us so many benefits. We get to experience all different fields of nursing. For myself, the thing I took out of it is knowing what I want to do in the future. It got me a chance to know that I want to do midwifery once I qualify. It also gives us a chance to learn vital skills that we can bring through our career the whole way. Because we go to such specialised placements and it really does help when we qualify. Brilliant. And Amy, I think it's important as well, what you mentioned is that you obviously have the opportunity to find that niche area that suits you. So do you want to talk to me a little bit about the benefits that you found of clinical placement, obviously using the skill set that you've learned here in the classrooms and bringing that out onto placement itself? Absolutely. But even to learn your theory in, in a classroom, it is, you can learn loads from a book. But when you go out and you meet that patient, you can register and you, it sticks to you more when you can apply a certain illness to a certain patient. I've had so many benefits from placement and as well, when you start college, you're in, in your lectures and you kind of get a click with some friends, but then you go in placement and you're not with any of those friends and you meet new people. So like I, when we first started, we weren't friends with, you were friends with maybe four people. But now we're all just a, like a united class, like we're all friends with each other. 
Brilliant. And Des, we're obviously going to talk about mental health nursing as well. Now, obviously, this has a title change this year. So it was previously psychiatric nursing and it's just had a title change. So obviously, there is nothing different. Our course code remains the same. Your entry requirements are all the same. But you want to talk to me a little bit about, obviously, the difference between our mental health nursing and our general nursing. Yes. And again, at the end of our uh, BSc Honours in Mental Health Nursing, and again, that title is in place from September of this year mm -hmm. for all our new uh, entry yes. coming onto the programme. This, this is also a Nursing and Midwifery Board of Ireland accredited programme. So in other words, it means that at the end of the programme, the student has completed an honours degree, but in this situation, they register in a different discipline. And that discipline is registered psychiatric nurse. So the title of registration is still psychiatric nurse, but we feel that mental health nursing encompasses or gives a more um, inclusive uh, description of what the program is about. So as we've increased with mental health awareness in Ireland and indeed the Mental Health Commission have guided us in that way, you know, there are specific areas and Amy would have talked about some of the specialist areas that are there in general nursing. So mm -hmm. likewise, there are succinct or specialist areas there in mental health nursing, such as community, such as child and adolescent mental health. And we're very closely linked with uh, community area eight here and the director of mental health nursing services there uh, facilitates placement for up to 26 students on an annual intake each year. Brilliant. And you've obviously mentioned as well clinical placement, which is embedded in all of our programmes, <coughs> which is amazing. But students just have as much of an opportunity to go out on placement as they do within the general nursing programme. Is that correct, Des? Yes, absolutely. And again, there's a total of 81 weeks of placement. So up to 50% of the programme is placement based. So in year one, there is approximately about 12 weeks. We move into year two, probably about 14 weeks and similar on the general programme again about another 14 to 15 weeks depending on how the academic mm -hmm. calendar varies mm -hmm. so um but by the end or before students go into the second half of fourth year they'll have completed 45 weeks of clinical placement on our mental health nursing programmes and then they will do a 36 week internship which is paid placement which will be across the clinical sites now all of our clinical placement sites, again, um, offer that variance or that eclectic mix of discipline specific, but also experience. And I think as Amy would have said there previously, the experiential learning that happens on placement is really, really important. So it's, it's that life experience that comes through the exposure to placement and the exposure to the clinical environment that allows the student at the end of the day to, I suppose, have that rounded learning experience. And that's what our honours degrees here in mental health nursing offers, as well as what Amy would have mentioned previously on the general nursing programme. Brilliant, Tess. That was an excellent insight into mental health nursing and really great for students who might be watching to learn about what opportunities they will have through this and how much the clinical placement really benefits them as they obviously progress through their four years and the amount of hours that they will get to obviously experience what, as Amy said, they've learned in the classroom and getting to experience it in the real world is so important, obviously, as a graduate afterwards. So obviously, it's important to touch base with our two other programmes that you've already mentioned with our, our, our higher certs in pharmacy technician and dental nursing both have incredible prog progression opportunities right here in AIT. So we'll talk about the pharmacy technician course first, obviously a really popular course and something that is really interesting even for students who might not understand kind of the backgrounds of it, but there is immense opportunities and really what a student experience is incredible throughout this program. So do you want to talk a little bit about this as sure, well? Sure, yes. Well, the higher cert in pharmacy technician program or often referred to as pharmacy tech. So, mm -hmm. yes. you know, in the world of abbreviations, <laughs> uh, you know, students will be familiar with that. So the, again, the entry criteria for this is very clear. We have some mature applicants that come onto the pathway, but we also have people who come direct entry through the CAO. Mm -hmm. And in both circumstances, uh, mature applicants take with them an interview process that that comes in that usually takes place around early May mm -hmm. and then it's available through the CAO applicants for mature yeah. uh, applicants along the way for our direct entry applicants they come through they start in September and it's usually in the again we have placement which is an implicit 
part of this program, but that's usually in the second year of the program. Okay, and that that placement occurs uh, in both hospital and community based pharmacy programs. So again, there's a scientific basis, obviously, to pharmacy technician. The um, you know. I think it's really clear that we have employment prospects are really, really good for graduates of this program with, you know, some 90, 95% of the, the graduates are actually either in employment or have gone on to further studies. So in addition to our higher search that's available here, we also offer a level seven add-on uh, one year program here for students. So many students choose to take that because it offers them greater competency, greater exposure of learning, both in hospital and in community-based pharmacy. And again, the programme coordinator here, Diane Patterson, will have spoken previously. And again, students will have the opportunity to meet, or prospective students will have the opportunity to meet Diane, both at our Open Day in November, and again at our virtual Open Day, in, which is coming up in two weeks. I think that's April 24th, if I'm yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, and I know that for so as Des was mentioning there, Diane is obviously our course coordinator and obviously as you guys as prospective students would love a little bit maybe more information about what this program is all about and its course content and modules. We also have our amazing AIT Decoded podcast series, which is an excellent opportunity for you to gain that really good insight into what the course is all about, but also hear from, for example, our course co coordinators like Diane. And we have, for example, podcast series for all of our CAO course offerings available here in AIT and also to mention just to finish up we're obviously going to talk about our dental nursing course and we also have an episode with our course coordinator Miriam and Des if you want to give us a little bit of an I insight into really this good. two year program as well and we can kind of get going on that. Yeah and again I suppose what's, what's important here to, to recognise is that our higher search in dental nursing is accredited by the Dental Council of Ireland so again this is a two year program which we currently have um, re-evaluated so so we, we're at the end of our five-year cycle on this. So as part of that, uh, the program has been uh, completely reviewed in more recent times and will be rolling out again in, in September. So it again has implicit over each semester uh, a placement. Okay, And placements are within dental practices here for it. Um, it's a higher cert program, obviously, yeah. over a two-year uh, period, and students can progress from this. And indeed, many students do choose to go on to do dental technician or go on to do uh, dental hygienists. And those programs are at level seven, not offered here currently in AIT, but we do, uh, are, and we're currently also um, reinvigorating. Yeah, and the open day was on the twenty-fourth. Um, BSc honors, which is in oral health promotion, uh, and sorry. My my apologies, that's a level right, seven, yeah. so it's a BSc in oral health promotion, which is offered. It's a one year add on. It won't be offered in 2022, but we will be offering it uh, going forward again in the subsequent academic years. Brilliant. We're changing the format for delivery on that. Brilliant. So, Des, I think that was an excellent insight into obviously the four programs available within this department. But, Amy, I'm going to come to you just as a student to kind of finish up, and I'm going to get both of your advice on this. But I know that often when students are watching, they just want a little bit of advice from obviously a student and also a head of department. So, Amy, if you were your 17 year old self and making this decision process again, what advice would you give to any students who might be in a similar format to yourself, looking at general nursing or any course? What advice would you give to them listening today? Um, I suppose the advice that I wish someone I gave to me back then is really that your hard work does pay off and that school mightn't be for you if you're going straight in, but that there is other options and to really look at, look at the other options. And if you're willing to put the hard work in, it really is rewarding and if you came to 17 year old me and asked me would I be in my third year of general nursing I probably would have laughed at you and said not a chance so it really is if you put the work in you can you can do whatever you want brilliant and Des have you any advice yeah I think two things as well as the learning that happens and I obviously have to advocate for academic learning that's my <laughs> my job but I think there's a social learning that's mm -hmm. about college you know and we have endeavoured throughout pandemic whilst we have gone to remote learning we've also encouraged that social networking and that's not what we're talking about networking in general we're talking among cohorts or individuals because it's that peer support that helps with 
I suppose, to give you a sense of family. And that's the one thing that we want to say about AIT. You know, having worked in larger institutions, there is a great sense of family. We do have an open door policy here, but we would, I would encourage any student coming to AIT to engage with the whole, mm -hmm. I suppose, experience Definitely. that is student life mm -hmm. at AIT, because it's that piece mm -hmm. that really makes college life Definitely. the experience that it is. Definitely. So thank you so much for joining me, the both of you today on this live panel discussion. It was excellent to hear about the array of programs that we have within nursing and healthcare, but also to hear from Amy, our student ambassador herself, about her experience and the benefits that she's had from clinical placement. So thank you both for joining me today and see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you.